Hey, what's up guys? After an energizing launch and orbit insertion of the Crew Dragon, let's see what Bob and Doc have got us to show from the Crew Dragon and the nail biting docking to the ISS. So after the successful orbit insertion, the astronauts on the Dragon is giving us a little true inside it and showing us what's seen on the three displays on board and giving a nickname for this mission capsule. Let's see what it is. Well everyone, welcome aboard Dragon. Uh, my name is Doug. Next to me is uh, Bob. You probably know him. We're so glad to be with you uh, this evening and uh, welcome you on board uh, Dragon. Got a couple uh, things we want to talk about first before we kind of show you around. The first is uh, kind of a tradition we've had uh, over the years with spacecraft going way back to the uh, Mercury era. Uh, and then a tradition that's been carried on ever since with uh, all our space vehicles, including the Soyuz. Uh, we uh, were, were given the honor to name uh, this capsule. I know most of you uh, at SpaceX especially know it as Capsule 206, but uh, I think uh, all of us thought that we could maybe do a little bit better than that. So uh, without further ado, we would like to uh, welcome you aboard Capsule Endeavor. The other reason we named it Endeavor is a little more personal to Bob and I. Uh, we both had our first flights on Shuttle Endeavor, and uh, it just meant so much to us to carry on that name. Uh, that's what we decided to go with. So we hope you enjoy that name, and once again, welcome on board. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome aboard Endeavour, the uh, SpaceX vehicle headed to the International Space Station. Uh, today, we accomplished the first flight off the Florida coast in uh, quite some time, and Doug and I were really proud to have an opportunity to be a part of that. Uh, we're doing it in a brand new uh, spaceship, a spaceship that's a lot different than its namesake uh, Endeavour, the space shuttle, in that it has uh, touch display screens that allow us to accomplish most of the interfacing requirements that we have. We'll have a of uh, Doug pans over and points at the display in front of me, you can see the, the forward view that we had uh, uh, during the maneuvers that we most recently did. You can look out the window. It looks like the centerline camera doesn't have a lot of content on it now. We're kind of pointed into space so that the windows can see the Earth below us. But we've got the capability to interface with the vehicle, and it's kind of interesting. There's a command. This little button over here is actually what the commands are for our displays. One thing that does get lost is there is a uh, extensive uh, button panel down below as well. So over on uh, this side, we can turn the displays on and off, as well as send some commands for some contingency situations. Uh, on the other side, we have the ability to uh, deploy shoots and things like that on entry. So uh, we do have some buttons, but the primary interface is uh, these displays. So nice, new, modern cockpit that we've got for our, our uh, compared to our namesake, the Space Shuttle uh, Endeavor. I'm going to migrate a little bit away from our our seats here, and Doug from his seat is going to continue to try to follow me so you can tell what can be seen from the, the seat that he sits in. So from his seat, when he is inside the in the vehicle strapped in, this is what his view actually looks like. You can Whoa, see, uh, look like they have a cozy the lighting inside, inside the dragon. A window that we can view out and, and see what's going on outside. That was exciting on Ascent for us to be able to see the the arm rotate away from the pad, and that's when we both, I think, knew that we were uh, going to launch today. So that was that was super cool. Some of the capability that we have now that we're in zero gravity. So I think I was requested to do a backflip. I'm going to kind of do a side spin, which is a little bit of a permutation on that request. So hopefully you can see what it's like to actually float in zero gravity. And uh, Doug and I are super excited that we got the opportunity to do this again today, uh, even before the end of May. So that was super cool. So with that, uh, I think it'll be good night from Capsule Endeavor. Good night to everyone at NASA, at SpaceX, and the United States, and congratulations to the teams that got us into orbit. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, Chris Cassidy 
and uh, his Russian colleagues on board the International Space Station uh, tomorrow morning. And now the astronauts will go through the 8 hour sleep for their upcoming laser focus on the docking to the ISS. As of now, they are 242 kilometers away from the ISS. Dragon SpaceX, we are go for you to begin the media event at this time. After 8 hours of sleep, the astronauts perform some maneuvers to align themselves for the docking position. After that, they show us a video. Well, good morning everyone from uh, Endeavour. We uh, had a great night uh, last night. I got to get a little sleep and uh, as you can see from the video, we are just passing over Saudi Arabia in the Middle East. A beautiful day pass right now. And uh, heading northeast up towards Central Asia and then we'll work our way out the western western part of uh, the Himalayas there and work our way all the way out over looks like Japan out into the Pacific uh, for this particular pass. If you uh, look closely in the video you can see just a sliver of moon uh, kind of halfway between the surface of the earth and the uh, window pane uh, as we're flying at about 17,500 miles an hour uh, around the planet. Getting pretty close to ISS. Uh, when we were in the uh, night part of this orbit, we actually got to see ISS out the window, which was pretty neat to see it for the first time on this trip. Bob's panning the camera back now, just kind of taking a look at around the uh, cabin just to see how things look after a uh, crew's lived in Dragon for uh, an evening. We, uh, last night, the way things went, we had our normal uh, activation, got out of our suit and got out of our suits, had some, uh, a little bit of dinner. Then, uh, wow, they had a dinner inside the Dragon. For, That's cool. Uh, orbit Ops. Did a couple uh, other events, including the media event last night, and then we uh, proceeded to get ready for bed, which uh, in space takes, takes a little bit longer uh, than I think uh, on planet Earth. Uh, we had to pull out sleeping bags and sleeping clothes and all those kinds of things got kind of cleaned up and then uh, we ended up sleeping uh, just like we are right now right in our chairs which was actually a pretty comfortable night's sleep. One of the things we did uh, yesterday was actually manually fly Crew Dragon uh, for the first time and uh, I want to compliment the teams. Uh, and Hawthorne uh, just a spectacular job uh, with the simulator as the vehicle flew exactly like the simulators out in Hawthorne. So just want to thank the teams that did all the work on that uh, particular uh, training device as well as all the modeling and the GNC it really worked out well. And, Speaking uh, of that simulator, you guys can have a use of that simulator yeah, for free in your devices. I'll provide a link down below. Before. And I have tried a couple of times to dock the station and it's a really hard job and I realize how much training they have went through. Now after several hours, they are approaching the ISS very slowly and precisely. Before watching the final approach, let's see how the Dragon approaches a different docking mechanism for America. The Crew Dragon is equipped with the 16 Drago thrusters mainly used for orientation, orbit adjustment and attitude control. And each thruster is capable of generating 90 pounds of force and these thrusters are powered by hypergolic propellants. This hypergolic propellants ignites upon combination of two components without any external source of ignition and can be used many times spontaneously. And there are different types of docking systems for American approach. They are animated well by the Simply Space video. Let's have a quick look. Works by having this target ring on the International Space Station and then a ring on the arriving spacecraft. But that ring on the arriving spacecraft is held with these actuators that can move it about and rotate it slightly. 
That way there's a margin for error since the reaction control system can't get a precise fit of those rings. When the spacecraft approaches, those actuator arms will line the two rings up and then they will push together, at which point those rings will lock together and then the arms can retract pulling the spacecraft in, at which point a seal will be formed, some checks will be done, and then the astronauts can open the hatches and go through into the space station. The next system is called the common berthing mechanism. It's technically not a docking port because a docking port is something you can attach to while using your own reaction control system to maneuver you into position. The common berthing mechanism just requires way too much precision for that because it's literally just these two rings that end up getting locked together. As such, we have to use the space station's robotic Canada arm to perform that precise fitting. The advantage with the common berthing mechanism is that it has quite a large diameter, so it's great for cargo supply craft like the SpaceX Dragon and the Northrop Grumman Cygnus. Well, that's a good explanation by the way. Here for this docking, we have the ring approach. So here is the dragon approaching to the ISS after lots of maneuvers. Let's enjoy watching it. The autonomous docking system at work, making sure that the, the uh, vestibule and the self-capture system is lined up with IDA2, the international docking adapter. You can see much more clearly there the hinge mechanism for the nose cone. Those four uh, black circles are the four bulkhead dracos, not to be used at this time. And then of course the, the pedals of the soft capture system. Wow. Dragon on the big loop, we're inside 10 meters. We cannot make out the target stocking target, but we can see the outline. We copy and concur, 10 meters. All right, we're less than 10 meters away. Again, we're closing at that rate cross target on the, the docking port. We have the four docking ports um, on PMA2, or the pressurized meeting adapter. And we are just five meters away. Again, we're racing that sunset. This dragon continues to close, four meters to go. The shadows of the, of the space station on the vehicle. Yeah, you can actually see the uh, centerline camera pretty clearly there, um, sort of with the contrast of the sun right now. Three meters to go. Two meters. We are inside the hands-off point, the chopper crew hands-off point, one meter to go. Soft capture complete. Dragon in Soft capture confirmed. Stand by for retraction and docking. Stand by. And we just heard it. Soft capture. We have docking. That coming at 7.16 a.m. Pacific time with the station and Dragon flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. And now the crew Dragon is docked to the International Space Station. Next Dragon, we copy docking complete. To say that it's been a real honor to be just a small part of this uh, nine-year endeavor since the last time the United States spaceship had docked with the International Space Station. We have to congratulate the men and women of SpaceX at Hawthorne, McGregor, and at Kennedy Space Center. Their incredible efforts over the last several years to make this possible cannot go overstated. I'd also like to thank Kathy Leaders and her team of the Commercial Crew Program of NASA. An outstanding job by everyone. Last, I'd like to thank the, the men and women of the National Aeronautics and Space Agency. This is an incredible time to be at NASA. Three new vehicles to be flown, continuing mission in low Earth orbit, and then to the moon and Mars. We thank you again and congratulate you. And Dragon copies on Dragon Ground that the power has been established. Just let us know when we should make a uh, hard line contract. And the chief commander on the ISS oh, it is performing various checks for pressure to equalize between space station and the crew Dragon. Beginning some of that uh, video from International Space Station, Chris Cassidy, given the go to open that node to forward hatch. Again, he opened it a little earlier today uh, to allow some of the station air to mix into the pressurized meeting adapter. There it is. Now again, it's, there's a few more hatches uh, to open until we uh, are able to welcome Bob and Doug aboard the International Space Station. You're looking through the hatch into the pressurized meeting adapter. Uh, there's another hatch down there uh, through the pressurized meeting adapter uh, that opens up to the International Docking Adapter. Houston 3, hey Josh, the uh, no, there was zero, uh, zero on DTDT and the no two forward hatches open.
And now we see Bob and Dog coming out of the Crew Dragon and entering the International Space Station. We have Bob Bankin from SpaceX Demo 2 mission entering the International Space Station. Followed by Doug Hurley. Station Houston, we see you, and it, it's a great looking photograph. Uh, so thanks for that. Stand by one. We'll call you when we're, we're ready for the event in the next few seconds. And that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching. Do leave a like, comment, and I'll try to answer as much as possible. And subscribe to have more videos like this.